no good. It's a no good. And Luigi. All right. So to cut to the chase, I don't I don't want to go over too much today. We did have that little interruption, but um, to cut to the chase, we know that the Book of Thorns is one thing, right? But what's the experience of going into the Book of Thorns itself? Like, what's that like? So I want to brainstorm around some ideas of how it could be different, but also I want to incorporate and or reflect back some elements that we have seen over the course of our adventure arc, right? So, I, 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 I rest assured that anything that you make up that I might be saying is probably more interesting than anything I am actually saying. All right. Now it's telling me that there are updates ready to install. Like, I waited for that to happen. Like, I booted this thing up at 1 o'clock. Like, I'm going to do my Dell updates and make everybody happy. Didn't The message didn't pop up. All right. So, let's do just a little bit of... Let's do a little bit of brainstorming together, shall we? Hmm. <laughs> let's do this differently. You go live over here. My soda, which is casting such a huge shadow, we're going to live over here. You're not going to be able to get the whole thing. That's fine. All right. So, I'm going to cut this down the middle. I'm going to make two columns to brainstorm on, right? <clears throat> Art stream! more of an organizational kind of stream, but over here we have established elements. Over here We have twists, variations, and boy, I want to call this like brand new kind of like just fabric. We'll call them fabrications. It's the, like on this side, I want there to be new elements that aren't necessarily reflected over here. So we'll have things that we've established. And then over here are things that maybe on the inside of the prison. So this is very important. This is outside the book. This is inside. the book. Now, yeah, good it's a good question. How do the thorns we we've sort of had this ongoing element of thorns in the campaign, right? Going all the way back to like the Guthius tree and the roots and the stakes and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, there's at the beginning of this arc <laughs> Avril <laughs> uh, planted some seeds and we tried to plant a, like a little plant and the, a thorn pierced her um, tack tried to draw on the power of the stake and a thorn in the stake pierced her finger and drew some blood. So, I mean, we can start right here with established elements. It's called the Book of Thorns. Uh, another thing, twists variations let's call this new elements alignment locked corridors is an interesting thing right 
<clears throat> All right. So. Come with me to my art corner, everyone. <clears throat> Black Razor is the key. <laughs> Blood needed to open the seals. Wow, that's an interesting. All right, to open the cells, I'm guessing, right? Um, we do know that, I think, I think it's been, like, all right, so, it's a, it's a bird book, book, one goes in, the golden apple. See, you guys are with me. Time is different. Each prisoner is isolated from the others. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Various states of confusion and delusion. I don't know that that's been... There is sort of this idea that you become a bird, right? So, we also need to make sure that we get our... I can't remember if Whippoorwill has one L or two. <laughs> so, this is a great question. Are there guards? <clears throat> um, it also raises the question... Uh, what areas can't we see, right? <laughs> Owl bears, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, so what areas can't we see? You know, Sir Eldrick... We know that Sir Eldrick... 
and Dell are in this book for sure. What's the layout? And like we know that do, 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 where is this? Well, we didn't write it down over here. We know that it's the dungeon for the Iron Keep, too, right? Also important. Like, it it belongs to the Iron Keep. Who would they keep in there when you say, when you know, when we think about what's the layout? What, um... Yeah, what other areas can't we see? So is there, kind of brings up this question, is there solitary, which is what it seems everybody to be in, supermax, What's the order slash arrangement? Does seniority mean anything? some interesting points. <laughs> what kinds of birds? Let's get our let's get our red marker going here. Has there been an escape? Uh, I think another important question that we have to ask is we know that Black Razor
We know that Gothius has affected Black Razor, right? And we know they got this book from uh, Belloc, the evil, you know, vampire druid down in the bottom of the Sunless Citadel. Fair question, has it been corrupted at all? <laughs> I'm going to put this over here because I haven't left myself a lot of room on this side. Gingy is a good, good point, right? <clears throat> um, Ava or Wave, right? I think so. So just to be clear, I think Wave functions as sort of the, um, really kind of like the lifeblood of the keep. Like I think Wave's traditional place is in that fountain in the central square of the Iron Keep that they went through six sessions ago. So I, I don't think Wave plays a big role in the Book of Thorns. I think it's got a different purpose. But, you know, it's, it's, good, it's good to try and make these connections, right? Um, another thing that we need to put on here is there have been a lot of not necessarily involved with the book but certainly in this adventure arc there have been a lot of riddles and puzzles right and going back to this black razor is a key keep in mind that Hargat broke Black Razor. Like, Hargat broke the key into four pieces, right? Or bro broke the key at any rate. So that needs to play in here somehow. Why did Hargat break the key? I mean, I like this idea of moving cells, right? I'm going to put down Tesseract or Cube. Ah, is Black Razor different inside the book? What does that mean? It also raises a question. How, how do you use Black Razor to open the like to get inside the book? How do you get inside? It's the number one question really needs to be answered. Can you all read this okay? I'm, I'm writing fairly big for me. Doesn't mean it's fairly big on camera. So like, this is something, I don't care about anything else. You need to know how you get inside. Yeah, so Christian Linky brings up an interesting point. Is Sir Eldrick a former wielder of Black Razor? I'm only asking because of name similarities. Um, yeah, there's Elric of Mill and the Bone, obviously, is what it's based on, but Eldrick 
uh, Cobblethwaite, I think is what I named him with his last name. I'd have to go back and look. I don't know if Jordan remembers. But uh, that's an interesting question. Is Sir Eldrick a former wielder of, of Black Razor? We know that Black Razor had this, this, this a different form, right? Like, like it was reforged by Bargag. So, it could be, you know, there's, I think something that we need to put in here is, like, there needs to be some sort of opportunities for lore, right? So that's um, you know that's that's important, right? I think we also need to look at how can we either how can we tie the interior to it being the dungeon for the Iron Keep because right now it's pretty weird that the Book of Thorns is the dungeon for the Iron Keep, right? It's interesting and it's fantastical. But I'd like to see some more sort of overt connection. And I think, you know, I think that how they perceive what the book looks like in our on our plane has to be it has to be a different manifestation when they go into the book. And so what is that, what does that physical space, how does it connect, and then how do you get to these, these cells, right? I mean, we could, we could do things with scale and how they connect and all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, there's a door in the keep that's identical to the book cover. Yeah, you know, so so that's an interesting thing. But then what happens when you go through that door, right? Like, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I haven't actually read the Elric of Melnabone book, so... <laughs> um, so don't, don't read too much into my naming conventions. Um... But we could do a lot of different things with scale, right? So we could do something where the, 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 the dungeon is one room and there's just these, you know, these... Uh, like there's these like plant containers, right? And, and there are these jars, these plants with jars all over them. When you lift them off, like that's how you would access that prisoner, right? They could be this tiny thing and you maybe put them into something and activate the machine or whatever it is, right? So that could be, that could be interesting. That takes a lot of the challenge out of like, where's Dell? Oh, she's in this jar. Well, now what do we do with it? Black Razor, what do we do with it? Uh, I don't remember. Uh, it's not very satisfying, right? Um, I like the idea more that there's, that it shifts around or there's some sort of like selector that you have to figure out how it works in order to find the right person. Um, I like the idea that maybe some prisoners have gotten free and taken over an area. I'm gonna call this like a lost area. Oh, or a reclaimed area. Yeah, and so also, like, what is, has it been corrupted? Like, this is a big question, right? Like, maybe that's what makes it the Book of Thorns, or maybe...
maybe, oh boy, our timeline is getting very convoluted here, but maybe the stake that Amy has is somehow connected to this, you know, maybe there, maybe there's like a rigid structure that has been corrupted by this growth of vines and thorns, and maybe the, uh, that's a great question. Um, and, and then maybe Amy's stake that she has, this Golthia stake, maybe that is somehow related, right? And I like this idea that BSB Care uh, has has come up with, with, like, the Book of Roses has become the Book of Thorns. Okay, and I think the other thing that we need, like, I want to I want to go on this side, maybe, like, make sure that we highlight some things, right? So we know that the Silent Whistle and the Whipper will have to be involved in this thing somehow, right? I don't know that's a big deal. I don't know that Sir Eldred has to come back, but those things need to need to come out. Um, and so I think you know this is pretty clutch, the Silent Whistle thing. It makes me wonder if there's not some sort of, uh, I don't know if you guys remember the Heward's Mystical Organ, the, the old school artifact where you could, if you could master <laughs> playing certain keys and melodies and things like that, different effects would happen. What if we had something similar in the dungeon, right? So that you had to you had to play a certain combination of musical notes in order to access a given cell or operation, right? Um, so that that could be an interesting that could be an interesting thing. And we've also had this thing. In fact, I'm going to highlight this over here. So we've also had this thing, this recurring thing of certain bird songs, right, as, as being a campaign element. And I think I would like to somehow bring that back. And, and originally in the book, you open it up and you would press on the bird's picture and it would animate and then it would do the song, right? Big question. When you go into the book... Do you bring a copy of the book with you? This marker's kind of giving up the ghost. Maybe, yeah, I like this idea that, that uh, BSB Care has, which is you, the, the silent whistle is how the inmates got into the reclaimed areas. It opens the internal doors. Could be interesting. Twig blights. Yeah, you know, are, th are, there, are they plant monsters? Is the silent whistle that uh, like some sort of um, master key, skeleton key? Ha <laughs> 
<laughs> Risky Pixels, I like this idea that you bring a copy of the book with you, but it's inverted. It shows the hero's journey from outside the book. <laughs> that would be really interesting, right? Like, what does the copy of the book looks like, look like inside the book? Is, is that now the Book of Roses? Is it a storybook or a picture book or something like that? Very interesting. All right. So, um, and we had we had a break and we kind of, we're starting to go over a little bit here. So I, I want to kind of tie this up. But I think these are a bunch of very interesting questions, right? That we need to, uh, so BSB Care, Somebody brought up the idea that Black Razor becomes corporeal and actually becomes the uh, becomes like the warden's deputy or something like that. I'm just gonna call him a shadow guide. The, the, here's the issue I foresee with that, right? Which is the natural inclination of the players is to go, oh, okay, Black Razor's not a person that we can talk to, which we can talk to anyhow, but like, okay, tell me everything you know. Like, I think Black Razor can't, if we're going to create some sort of challenge here in terms of you have to figure out how to access a particular cell, you want, I mean, you want to get to Dell ultimately, right? Um, yeah, I don't like the idea of Black Razor betraying the party because that seems very on the nose. That's like super predictable. It gives Avril an opportunity to just tell off Thawne, like, I told you so. Look what an idiot you are. And he goes, I should have known. I want him to gradually come to the realization that this thing has strings attached that he might not like rather than kind of like slapping him in the face with it. Um, but in, a, in any case, there's a real issue here where it's like Black Razor should know the prison and know how it works. But in that case, he should just be able to tell them how to get Dell out of her cell. Right? And it's, it's a little too on the rails. It's a little too easy and straightforward. So it raises the question, like, how has, you know, is there a way that the prison has changed? Or is, like, was there a jailbreak and somebody took some of the keys or changed some of the organization of how this thing is supposed to work? Um. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean... It's been a long time since Black Razor was last in the prison. So that's that's the big question is like how has it changed since Black Razor was in there? I guess I don't have that on the board. I kind of have it under there has that has it been corrupted. It's sort of these two bullet points. Has there been an escape and has it been corrupted? That's sort of these two points right here, right? In terms of how has it changed since Black Razor was in there. So, um, removing someone dis destabilizes the prison, or there's a fragment of Gulthius inside. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's interesting. I feel like this Gulthius guy is popping up everywhere, so I, I don't want to. I know it's a major campaign theme. I just don't want to play it too hard sometimes. All right. Well, I think what this boils down to is we've got some elements that we've established. Clearly, things on the inside of the prison need to be different, right? And I think there's some opportunities for maybe escaped prisoners to have established their own little kind of like colony inside of this thing like just waiting for somebody to let them out um i haven't really done anything with this one goes in one must come out um 
I think we could create some sort of challenge around trying to figure out which cell has Dell inside of it. Um, it brings up a question is like, is there a list of current prisoners? <laughs> is there a roster? And that goes back to this order. Is there a roster? That, that would help you with the order and arrangement. And once they figure that out, and that goes back to this riddles and puzzles thing, right? All right, so I think we have enough elements like that we've, 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 we've done enough kind of brainstorming of here's what's established. Now find a way to twist this thing based on what we know so that it provides new insight, new context, and really kind of like steps up the level of kind of fantastic exploration that we're going for, right? So that once they go, the, the, what we want them to do is once they go inside the book, they go, oh, wow, okay, this is really different on the inside. This is really cool. Um, yeah, well, it's already been established that Black Razor has been tainted by Goltheus's presence, right? So the, the, it raises the question of has the prison been also somehow tainted? I don't know. Why not? You know, it was, it's, it's certainly, the book was in possession of Belloc and was used to kind of feed souls to the Gulfius tree. So I think we could maybe somehow bring back, I don't even know where this lives. Has it been corrupted? What if one of one of the pages in the book doesn't have any birds in it? It has the Gulfius tree. I think there's also a, a, a big opportunity here for when you get inside, you bring the book with you, but the book looks different inside. Or there's an, an there's an analog. There's a there's a parallel version inside. There's the original there's the original book of thorns maybe that's chained to a desk or something like that. Or the book of roses is chained to the desk. And its pages are faded and worn, right? And it has some sort of roster of what's currently in the prison, like a roster reflection. Almost like a security camera where you could turn the page and see what that prisoner is doing or something like that. I'm going to put down, I'm going to just put down security cam. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a lot of like bookception stuff going on here. Uh, uh, General General Fancy Pants brings up this thing. I just watched a movie where people were trapped in a maze made out of cardboard, and when they died, instead of blood, it was strings of red paper, and everything in the maze was made of cardboard. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, you could have something with like. Like paper stains in the book or something like that. I just want to make a note here. Like, <clears throat> let's talk about kind of like the format for this thing, right? So we could use dungeon tiles. We could use. Uh, I like the idea of doing isometric gaming paper. We could use an actual book. We could use some sort of, you know, blank playing cards. 
and I think we could use some sort of scroll in terms of physical props on this set of stuff. Jenga blocks. Oh, <laughs> oh I love that idea. Like, yet yeah, you have to, you know, here's the, here's the problem with this group of players is they will, I don't know that they'll be able to not bump the table. But I love the idea that it's like there's labeled Jenga blocks and you have to pull the one that has Dell on it and not collapse the pile. Ooh. Ooh. Fold the gaming paper into the book. Open the book when they come in. Put the map on the table. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Uh, those are all, those are all, super, these, this, you know, the, the physical elements of the game. I think those are super... Those are great suggestions, and I think it's also an important way that we can make this section distinctive from some of our other se sessions, right? Like, really, it's an opportunity. We're, we're looking towards, the, this is maybe going to be the climax of our adventure arc. Like, finally, we get Dell, right? There hasn't been, like, a fight the big bad. They had the big giant demon crab battle, right? There hasn't been a, like, we haven't brought our action to a climax. And this... Getting off of our standard battle map, getting away from theater of the mind, sitting around and moving on our five foot squares, like doing a, a, a way, figuring out a way to twist that paradigm with new props, making the players see this thing in a different, from a completely different perspective, I think is a really important element as a DM. Like, a way to... You know that the, the adventure's been building, 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 and you need to do something special to add that extra little tweak to, you know, provide the, the top off. Sometimes that's just drawing a big battle map and putting a bunch of really great miniatures on the board and we have our fight. Like, we did that at the end of Sunless Citadel, right? I don't think that's what we're going to do with this. You know, this has been much more of a puzzle box type of dungeon. So if we can use a way to, you know, make it an actual, like, puzzle game, I think it, it's very fitting thematically, and it really takes the player's perception of the experience to a different place, right? All right, these are all great suggestions. Um, I'm going to have to go off and ponder this and kind of do some planning. Uh, <laughs> have the, have the Jenga tower on a different table or do a, like a Rubik's cube. Yeah. Those are both interesting ideas. I have to go buy a Ru Rubik's cube. Cause I don't, I don't think I get Amazon one quick enough at this point. Um, a maze is an interesting, I would want it to be some sort of dynamic maze, right? I would want them to be able to, I mean, I could, I could make that happen too, right? Where I could, I could cut geomorphic pieces of a maze and have them kind of turn it and manipulate them to get to um, to get to a particular goal. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add those to our little list here. Maze. Rubik's Cube. Yeah, Hogwarts Maze. So, I don't know if we have Hobby Town. That's a good question. Yeah, those wooden puzzle games. We'll see. All right, everybody. Well, uh, these are some fantastic ideas. Kind of get the wheels turning. I feel like we go too much, too much further down the road. We're gonna, we're either gonna stall out or we're gonna come to like a great conclusion. Of this is the best possible answer, and then it's spoiled for everybody, <laughs> right? I like the Rubik's Cube. I did, the thing is, like, would you have to solve it for one side? Would you have to solve it for two sides? Would you have to solve the whole thing? Like, I think it's a tall order. The thing about, like, forcing the players to solve it is it goes one of two ways. 
the entire party tries to solve it and it takes forever and they never get it. Or you have somebody sitting at the table who goes, I know how to do Rubik's Cubes, and they go, rup, 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 and they get it. Um, yeah. So, so that's, um, that, that's a, it's a tricky thing. I think you would have to decide, like, oh, okay, the way to access Dell's cell is you have to ha have blue and yellow opposite each other, complete and opposite each other. Or, you know, you have to have three sides complete or something like that. But that, I mean, those, that, that's one of those deals where people's out of game skill does is not does not correlate with what their characters can do right it, the, the argument that it's going to come up i guarantee it is well i have a 20 intelligence i should be able to just do this you know um that's that's tricky right yeah yeah so i don't know we can we can think about that. I like that idea. I don't know how thematically it plays into... I think it would be fun to, like, find a Rubik's Cube that didn't have colors on it, that maybe had some sort of, like, glyphs on it. That would be that would be cool and interesting. Or to make one like that. So take a Rubik's Cube and then draw on it so that it had little glyphs and runes and you had to like maybe you didn't even have to align the colors you just had to align all of the you know all all of the glyphs for fire you know, or something like that yeah all right so <laughs> very good very you have a sudoku cube yeah 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 interesting those those would be fun <laughs> They're chased by an immortal boss that you have to figure out the cube while he's fighting and chasing them. That, that, those sorts of split challenges can be all right. That, that can be a way to like increase time pressure. Is that the, like the the boss starts sacrificing hostages um, each time that you fail to solve each round that you fail to solve the cube or whatever it is. Um, I, I just, I'd want to get away from the cube. I'd want to add some sort of, I like the idea that there's time pressure, but I'd want to get away from the idea that you, the player, have to know how to do this thing in order to solve this challenge. That seems unfair and not fun, right? If you know how to do it, it's also not fun, because you just go, rup, rup, rup. I mean, you get this little moment of like, ha, 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 I solved your dungeon, but like the challenge is over almost immediately. So, uh, <laughs> they need to spell Dell by putting D-E-L-L -L on four different spaces of a standard Rubik's Cube. Yeah, the problem is that Rubik's Cube, is, isn't it, is it three by three or is it four by four? Yeah. Uh, all right, we've gone down, we've gone down an, an amazing rabbit hole here. I think there's, you know, a, a, a ton of interesting possibilities for this. Uh, we could even do some sort of thing with cards, right? Where you need to draw the appropriate cards to get that sequence together. You know, what if there was... You, you look at a bird book and you go, well, the bird has a habitat, it has a preferred food, it has a certain color plumage, it has a certain, I, I don't know, I don't know what else, what other facts, wingspan, that sort of thing, but you might have to put the elements in place for that bird in order to, like, to get that one. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me either if one of the players knows the trick to the Rubik's Cube. Um, yeah. <laughs> you guys, you guys, re you're all re really tuned into this thing being a Rubik's Cube. I like the idea that it's Jenga and that there's the blocks are labeled or something, and you maybe have to pull the four blocks that spell Dell or spell Whippoorwill or whatever it is, right? Like that, that could be interesting too. It seems that seems a little too straightforward in terms of like spell this word and it gets you in, but yeah. I think there's definitely got to be some sort of... There's got to be some sort of challenge to accessing the cells. 
All right, we're way over on our time. Uh, these are all fantastic ideas. I'm very excited to kind of like sit and mull on them and figure out, okay, well, here's where we're going next with this. So um, thank you for all of your input. This has really been tremendously helpful to sit down and like make this list, kind of brainstorm ideas like where where might we go? How might it be structured? You know, this is the stuff that's that's honestly like very daunting for me is that the possibilities are wide open. We don't have an adventure to adapt. We don't have something that we've just gone, oh, okay, well, we're going to take this dungeon and we're going to put a couple twists on it and they go play through it, right? Like the Book of Thorns, I don't want it to be a big, long adventure arc, but I'd like it to be at the very least one extremely compelling session, right? And having this blank page, literally like a bank blank page of like, where do we go with this thing? That sort of stuff. I, I need to sit down, talk through it and think through it and try and make some connections that then build an interesting scenario and a, an interesting set of circumstances, right? And, and a plausible and logical set of circumstances. So this has been very helpful for, for me. Um, yeah, you're sort of relying on player skill versus character skill for Jenga. That's true. Uh, Christian Linky asks, if Black Razor is, is, a, is the key, do souls it devours open doors? I mean, that may be something that that's what adds the time pressure, right? Is as soon as you get into the prison, Black Razor goes, oh, I must feed. And it just sort of like pulses and you see one of the lights, you know, if there's like a switchboard type thing of these cells are occupied, one of the lights goes out, right? And Black Razor just starts gorging itself on souls. That's pretty gross, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, interesting. must feed all right potential for lots of lots of nancy stuff i think it's going to be difficult not it, it, one of the pit, pitfalls here is to try not to be too mean to the players right that's that's definitely one of the uh traps that we can fall into is to be very harsh with the players and make the challenge too hard for them uh, and they're dealing with a lot of very potent magic type of stuff and a lot of kind of epic level boss type of things, I don't think we want to make them... I don't think we want to punish them. We want to have high stakes for the climb. It's the climax of the adventure. We want to raise the stakes. We want them to do something heroic. We want them to feel like they have accomplished and paid off this big, long, you know, climb the stairs to the top of the arc of the adventure. And we want to give them that, you know, roller coaster ride to the bottom but we don't want to unfairly punish them or make them feel like they're out of their league, right? So, a wall of flowers, not lights, and the flowers wither when a soul is devoured. That is, that is also a great idea. Wall of flowers. All right. Very good. Hey, uh, let's go back over here, everybody. Hey, they're only fourth level. Whatever. They've got bumps. They can. They. They're tough. I'm gonna two fireballs. They can take it, right? Like that's not a big deal. Counterspell. Counterspell. Finger of death. Legendary action. Sphere of annihilation. All right, so that's uh, that's been today's topics, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for um, taking a beautiful look at my dishwasher here. So, uh, <laughs> uh, you have that trope of meeting something you can't beat early in your career before leveling up and defeating the big bad later in your career. I feel like that's kind of where Goltheus fits into this whole thing of like, when we know who this guy is. Now, what if they free Gultheus? What if Gultheus is inside this book? Ha <laughs> ha! Oh! <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> as M says hello points out, remember, not everyone can ride the unicorn. <laughs>
good point. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what that means. I just love that phrase. <laughs> they accidentally free Gothias. Ugh. What? They'll be so mad. They'll be so mad. All right. <clears throat> we, will, we will ponder all of these things. Let's take a look at our calendar, everybody. Hey, uh, nothing else is going on today. No big deal. That's fine. Tomorrow night is the Iron Keep Chronicles where you can see all of this play out before your very eyes. If you... Uh, if you didn't catch the Twitch rebroadcast, we'll have that uh, Wednesday afternoon before the show. Uh, Thursday, I'll be back at 2 o'clock here with Disorganized Play, and we'll talk about how it actually went down. Did they actually free Gothias? <laughs> uh, maybe not. Uh, Thursday night, it's uh, Mr. David Crennan's Star Wars Edge of the Empire game, Never Tell Me the Odds. Yes, uh, that's 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 always on a Thursday. That's always on a Thursday. Friday night, the Wild and Wacky Adventures of Wild Cards with uh, DJ uh, Jordan Caves Callerman continues. So tune in for that. Mr. Dom Zook will be back uh, in the saddle, uh, adventuring with his fellow compatriots there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Saturday, you've got the day free, but on Sunday, we've got a brand new show coming up, Tempting Fate, with Amy Dolan, Gina DeVivo, Aliza, Aliza Pearl, and Heather Wood, with uh, GM's Rick Budd and Nick Gilman. Uh, we just sat down and talked some fate with them on Thursday night, and uh, it, was a, it was a very fruitful conversation. Morgan Ellis was kind enough to make the drive up to Studio City, or Toluca Lake, and uh, have a chat with everyone and kind of like clunk heads about uh, how the show is going to come together. And it, it should be interesting. It's going to be definitely be something different. I think you'll enjoy watching it. Tune in for that Sunday at 5 o'clock. So uh, thank you again so much to uh, Fockwad, all of our regulars, everybody who mods, everybody who contributed their ideas. It was really <laughs> an interesting kind of... Uh, it was an interesting brainstorming session. And it really... Uh, was fruitful for me, and I hope that you got something out of it. I'm very interested to see how this plays out uh, tomorrow night. But until then, let's dungeon. 5,023 in a row. Hit every single one. Amazing. I mean, except for those computer crashes, right? But we're not counting those. Let's not count those. Okay. You hear clicking? I don't hear any clicking. 